Hello, everyone, and welcome to Conversations in Horror. I'm your host, Kevin L. Powers. I am also the festival director and program director for Something Wicked Film Festival and Events, and welcome to our podcast today. Now, today, we're going to delve deeper into some of the genres that uh, we don't normally get into, but this one came up as uh, a requested film, uh, so we decided to do it anyways. And because we don't do enough comedy horror films, this is a great one to jump right into. So we're going to take a deep dive into Broken Lizard's Club Dread from 2004. Now, I know there's a lot of people out there who uh, probably think this is more a comedy than horror, but you know what? Our conversation is going to delve deep into that. And to join me today is Sarah Panazzo, who has been on the show many times before. And uh, both of us really are big fans of Broken Lizard. So it's a great opportunity for us to sit down and discuss this movie. So thank you, Sarah, for uh, joining us today. Yeah, I'm super excited about this one. These are probably some of my favorite creators of films. They're not very high rated. They're a lot more cult classics, but I have loved watching them since I discovered them back in like middle school, high school, I guess now. <laughs> okay. So uh, tell us a little bit about uh, your, your your experience with this film or why you enjoy the film before you get into any type of plot details or characters or broken lizards themselves. Um. So I first came upon this movie after one of my friends had showed me super troopers and we're we were all a bunch of like movie nerds so they were like oh my god you haven't seen any other other stuff well i've got a horror movie for you and it has easily become one of my favorite horror comedies we go back and watch it so many times a year i constantly pronounce certain people's names wrong now on purpose because of this movie um it's quotable bill paxton is just phenomenal uh it's such a fun movie it's so campy <laughs> so i have uh the 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 probably the worst story in regards to being introduced to this film so i i, I me and panas were just talking before we started the podcast that it's been about 20 years since i've seen this film since i only saw it when it originally came out which is sad to say that uh when i originally saw it i did enjoy it but the thing was that I didn't know who Broken Lizard was when I saw this. <laughs> I had not seen uh, Super Troopers before. I had never heard their name. I just kind of saw this movie because Bill Paxton was in it. And I love Bill Paxton. So <laughs> that would be the reason why it got to me. Um, I don't think I, I think I've only seen this movie three times now. So Because I think the last, the second time I saw it was after I saw Beer Fest, which I really enjoyed. Mm -hmm. um, I did not, and I... <laughs> Everyone's going to hate me when I say this, but I didn't see Super Troopers, the first Super Troopers to the second Super Troopers came out. So I, I was not in, in, inundated with Super Troopers and Broken Legend at that time. Club Dread was the film that I knew them for because it right above the title it says Broken Lizards Club Dread. Um, so I did see the movie when it originally came out. I didn't go to the theaters or anything like that, but I did see it when it, uh, when it started, when it came out on DVD because of Bill Paxton. Um, so... I am coming around to Brooklyn Lizard from a roundabout way uh, because Beer Fest uh, is uh, my favorite film of theirs next to the Super Trooper movies and then uh, this one now. And I'll get into more details as we discuss this a little bit longer. <laughs> mm. So with this film, Club Dread, this uh, I, I, I only know seeing this the second time. For some reason, the first time I saw this in my memory of this film is that it was just a laugh out loud comedy. But when I rewatched it, I kind of got the impression that they really were trying to make a, a a good slasher film with gore that just happens to have comic elements in it. It's not a laugh out loud comedy like say Beer Fest or Super Troopers. It's it is really a horror film with some comedy characters in it <laughs> yeah i believe i read somewhere that this was their favorite one that they've made um but yeah it's very much on the parody scale of like scream or a little bit darker than scary movie because scary mm -hmm. movie is very much slapstick comedy Oof. um whereas this is a this is parodying everything but there's so many darker things like you get the whole uh, Pac-Man game where the killer puts on the pineapple suit and it's like almost a shot for shot of Michael putting on the mask in Halloween. Um, you get a lot of weird stuff like that. You get the sleepaway camp moment. 
Um, I mean, there's so many little moments in this movie that are just perfect. The characters play everything completely straight. Mm -hmm. Um, And it's just so funny and it's so well done. Some of the kills are ridiculous. What ends up going on and the, the hit list, as I guess you could say, is oh, that's why that's why I saw it. it's a hit list. He, the killer has a hit list that he's just marking people off as he kills them. And going back and rewatching how that character reacts to them trying to find out who's killed next and who's the killer is some great character work. Because then you go back and you realize little things. I don't want to get too far into spoiling it because it is a fun reveal. But there are some terrifying moments just with, like, jump scares. And then you get the whole, like, girl falling off the cliff and grabbing the blade because she doesn't want to fall off the cliff and die. And there, there's a lot of moments that are straight from other horror movies. That's why my opinion changed in this movie. Because, I can't, I, like I said, for some reason I thought of it when I in my brain, my memory was that this was a slapstick comedy, which is probably why I hadn't watched it in so many years. But when I rewatched it recently, I got the sense that they were actually trying to make a good horror film with with, with that has comedy in it. Now, there's no jokes in this movie. The, it, it's literally it's all character based comedy. This is the way the characters act. And you would believe that because they're on a pleasure island. You know, oh my they, God. They're completely <laughs> carefree. They don't care, you know, they only care about having a fun time on spring break. So you can imagine that that's what these characters would be like. Um, so I did not see this movie as a spoof or a, or a, I saw it, it was parody it because you will see, and I didn't see this the first time. I wish I'd seen it 20 years ago. Uh, you're right. This movie has so many homages to every type of horror uh, film out there. Halloween, yes. Sleepaway Camp. And I don't think I saw these when I originally saw the movie 20 years ago. I'm only seeing it now because now I'm looking uh, yeah. more for this film, which I, I know a lot of people out there. I, I told uh, I just really saw it because it had Bill Paxton in it, so I wasn't. I didn't give it. I didn't give it a high praise really when it originally came out. I just wanted to watch because Bill Paxton was in it. But watching it years later, after seeing all the different sequels to Scream and all the different horror movies that are self-referential, this film film was doing that really early on, um, which I can appreciate. Yeah, because going back and watching it now, like the first time, I I didn't put two and two together for a lot of them. I was just enjoying the film. Mm -hmm. But then like even now, like you get to the scene where they reveal all the bodies and I'm like, oh, that's Mind Hunters. <laughs> um, and it just, it can be so gruesome, but it can be so cheesy. And yeah, you're right. The character-based comedy is phenomenal. I mean, they have the opening, like, welcome to the island. It's yeah. essentially like Margaritaville, except for like 20 and 30 somethings. Um, but they've got like DJ slash drugs. There's the fun <laughs> police. Um, I mean, they've got the aerobics fitness instructor and Bill Paxton's character, who is heavily based on Jimmy Buffett. Um, <laughs> even like tells them, like, go, some of these go have sex with everybody. Some of these guys are even good looking, like make them want to come back. <laughs> a, a film that actually promotes uh, uh, sexual intercourse throughout for everybody. <laughs> for everybody but one. Uh, yeah, but the thing is, the funny thing is that the killer's not killing any of the actual guests who are all no. having sex with everybody. It's These killers all only the employees. And he like makes a note as to like, do your job or you're gonna die <laughs> but like the fact that it li like some of the quotes from this are fantastic but like the fact that it lines up to these really great but really awful parodies of jimmy buffett songs is fantastic because like uh bill paxton plays and sings i think it was like five or six different songs for the movie mm -hmm. and they've actually released them all on record and then re-released it in the last two or three years i want to say yeah, I think it was you that told me that. I was like, I didn't know that they were released the songs. I was like, oh, man, I may have to get those just to listen to the whole song. I'm curious. Yeah, so I, it, they've sold so many of the records, like the actual vinyls, because they've got different cover versions. Um, and, I mean, these songs are brilliant. There's the entire scene where they're around the campfire playing songs. And they finished playing, and this drunk girl's like, play Margaritaville. And he's like, no, it's Pina Coladaberg. <laughs> um, but the music 
is just so funny and the fact that they take this stupid stupid song what was it naughty cal and they have to figure out the order that people are dying to this song that uh bill paxton's pineapple pineapple pete yeah pineapple, pineapple pete. pete or coconut pete now coconut you got pete. Coconut coconut pete. Pete. <laughs> i'm like it's it's fruit it's something uh but co coconut pete is like oh yeah i don't even know what that song was about i was very heavily on drugs <laughs> and that's like most of the songs they sing and it that's basically how the rest of the movie goes is there's a bunch of like stupid stuff that lines up together and it's just wonderful dark comedy yeah there you go that's a that's a very good way to put it is dark comedy not so much like a parody comedy but dark comedy yeah uh, especially towards the last act when you when they all when the the kills start getting ramped up and yeah the just all start getting killed one by one yeah the horror or the comedy is a lot less but the horror is still a hundred percent there yes yes yeah uh it, it, even if in the, the reason why i say that is because there's a lot more gore in there that you would expect from a uh a, a absolutely record. yeah yeah so uh that yeah <laughs> uh my my impressions of the film were uh much different this time around and it's it was odd because i i watched that uh, show tacoma fd uh, religiously and seeing some of the characters in there and then going back and this is 20 years later i know 20 years before i'm watching them in here and it's still fucking hilarious um and i think i find the humor in it more because i have seen the super trooper films i've seen slam and salmon i've watched the coma fd i've seen Bro the broken li lizard people a lot mm -hmm. a lot of stuff whereas when i originally saw this film this was the first thing i'd ever seen them in yeah i mean i love their comedy in general i've been making sure i watch all, every single one of their films i haven't caught up on the tv shows yet um i know they're working on super troopers 3 which is called winter soldier i believe <laughs> oh my god Winter Soldiers, yes. So I know that they're working on it, but the fact that they are such a cohesive group that they do the same thing every movie is they all get together, mm -hmm. write and act and produce in unison, and then one of two of them, one or two of them directs, um, and that there's like no general leader. They are an entire group. A yeah, group, yeah. Um, and I, I love it. I mean, people say that they put out some like bad stuff or it's whatever, but I'm like, it's just not your type of comedy. I think they're brilliant. Um, I know a lot of people were disappointed when they didn't come out with Weed Fest after Beer Fest, like they hinted that in the movie. But, but I, I love what they're doing. Um, I really wish they would do another movie like this or jump to other genres. Mm. But I think they're very talented. Uh, the fact that they met up with Jimmy Buffett afterwards, and they really? filmed it for, yeah, they filmed it for him privately, and he loved it so much that he asked to perform some of the songs on tour. Oh my god! When they originally released this, uh, <laughs> but the whole thing is just ridiculous. I mean, like I say, instead of Penel Penelope, now I say Penelope all the time. You can't get past that. You know what? Uh, I remember that from twenty years ago. I remember that when it when and when I rewatched it, I was like, "Oh yeah, that's right." He yeah. pronounce it the whole name. Calling oh, people Piccadilly whores. I mean, every time you jump in the water, squeeze your ass cheeks together, or water will fly up your butthole and pulverize your insides or intestines. There's so many great one-liners that are such outside horror films. I mean, sometimes you get some good ones too, but like these are just above and beyond yeah they 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 are but i also want to mention the fact that uh uh the cinematography for this is better than you expect for a horror it comedy. really is it's it's shot very well especially like with the night scenes and everything like yeah. that like it's beautiful yeah it, 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 it's like they they decide the the, the 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 watch every great horror slasher movie and borrow shots from those movies and integrate them in this comedy where it you might you might think it wouldn't work necessarily because a mm -hmm. lot of people try it but it works brilliantly in here uh and the first time i watched it i, I could tell you now i didn't see any of this because i wasn't looking for it uh but the second time i watched it or this recent time i watched it i saw all of it and i was like holy shit 
Slumber Party Massacre shots. I see those in mm-hmm. there. I see uh, the shots from Halloween, Friday the 13th. It was like they were cribbing from all the great yes. slasher movies. And they were doing a really good job of integrating them into their story, which should not work. But, but it does. <laughs> I you- mean, even even with the music going off of that, like you're, you typically get like the, okay, there's the fun song or whatever that turns into a creepy theme. And they do that with Naughty Cal at the end where he says, we're all going to die. And then eventually they get to the scene with the head on the record player that slows it down. Just repeating, we're all going to die. We're all going to die. <laughs> uh, yes. Uh, yeah, I, I, I noticed that uh, too this time watching it because I was paying attention this time. I hate to say I wasn't paying that much attention the first time, but you know, and that happens sometimes. Uh, uh, this time we were critically discussing movies like this. Uh, we all try and uh, watch them uh, with a, a, a clearer, uh, clearer eye, I guess, uh, to see some of these um, filmmaking techniques in them that we may have missed over the first time we watched them or the second or third time until we watch it for the show. Uh, <laughs> um, but the thing about this movie is I, and I probably need to go back and watch like Super Trooper movies because this being the first one I've watched and I'm seeing how well it was put together and done. Sadly, it didn't make a whole lot at the box office from what I remember. But um, the thing is, I guarantee you that the filmmaker and what's his name, the director who usually does a lot Jay. of- the- Yeah, Jay. Jay. Chandraskar. Yeah. So he, you know, he directs a lot right. of- the- the, the he does a lot of their films and you kind of get the idea that that he could do it with just about anything that he puts his mind to because he has a lot of great influences and he knows how to integrate those into mm-hmm. any story that he does um i'm like you now i hope that i hope and wish that they come out with another type of genre that they kind of riff on um yeah. because like this it's kind of like gene wilder doing you know young frankenstein you know the the i the odd little film in his filmography that doesn't fit with anything else i would I, i'm gonna I hope that the uh, broken lizard will come out with more films like this because i think it would be great yeah it came out with like their own version of a western i think that would be absolutely brilliant or their own version of a gangster film. Come on, oh Broken my gosh. Lizard doing a gangster film. Would I be could awesome. see them doing a western. I absolutely <laughs> could. Um, I was gonna say that. Um, I think it's Paul Soder, um, who is the DJ in this movie. Actually, has I think he wrote and directed one horror film. It was quite small. Um, but Jay has gone on to direct multiple episodes of different tv shows like Mm -hmm. he did a couple of community psych he basically came into a bunch of big shows and has directed for the last decade yeah yeah Um, he doesn't stop (laughs) yeah he he doesn't stop at all and i mean now that uh what's his name kevin heffman has started directing too because he's the one who did slam and salmon and quasi and he uh i don't think he directs tacoma fd Hmm. But I I know he's the, one of the main writers with uh, Steve. Mm-hmm. Um, but I I love what they keep doing. Uh, I watched a bunch of their videos where Kevin and Steve were doing their stand up comedy tour because that was really funny. Uh, but yeah, I I want to see them do more. I know they're all busy with their own lives and stuff like that. But yeah, I forgot about Quasi. I haven't seen that one yet. I keep forgetting about that one. I need to put that one on my list. <laughs> oh, so yeah, I need to put that on my list. But uh, yeah, I mean, uh, I'm trying to think of any other um, group like Broken Lizard that's out there. And I keep, I keep, I don't think there is anymore. There's not a lot of comedy troops. I think the closest thing we got was maybe Lonely Island creating their music. I mean, that's a whole other Genre, culture, culture type yeah. thing. But like, we don't, get major groups like that anymore like you might get like guy Ritchie's group or wes anderson's group wes anderson's group. <laughs> but that's more of like a director and his preferred cast instead of a collaborative mm-hmm. group yeah i agree i don't think yeah it's i don't know how often i don't i, don't, I can't recall how many uh, comedy groups out there continue to do such type of films other than 
Ah, the guy who did the best of show and waiting for Guffman. I can't think of his name. Crap! I know people out there are going to kill me. Oh, my <laughs> God. Uh, I can't, because he uses his um, his group. Christopher Guest. Christopher Guest. <laughs> Christopher Guest. Uh, he likes to improv with all of his troop people mm-hmm. the scripts before writing the scripts. Um, and I always found that fascinating. So for me, um, Broken Lizard, after Super Troopers 2, when I actually recognized who they were and what they did, <laughs> uh, I wish that they would do more stuff like that. Um, unfortunately, when I saw this and I saw Beer Fest, the Broken Lizard hadn't been integrated in my brain yet. Mm-hmm. Um, it wasn't until I ended up seeing Super Troopers 2 and then so I saw Super Troopers 2 before seeing the first one. That's how bad it was. Uh, my wife is absolutely a fan of Super Trooper movies. I had to go take her to go see Super Troopers 2. I thought that was funny as shit, so then I went back and watched Super Troopers the first one. There you go, everybody. I didn't watch it in order. I suck at this comedy stuff. Uh- <laughs> well, and it's great because they're they're super quotable. They're really fun. And I mean, they were like the epitome of the 2000s with 2000s humor. <laughs> um, I mean, I remember being in high school watching these and all of their movies were just loved by everybody unanimously. Uh, it was something that we would all go watch on a weekend and then not stop quoting for like two months. Uh, I think uh, the, oh, what was it? Uh, I think the reason why I didn't gravitate so much is because uh, I was much older when that movie came out and I'm much older than you by at least a decade. So uh, I didn't grow up on super troopers. And for me, it didn't look interesting until I had to talk to my wife. My wife absolutely loves this, loves, loves her films. Um, So I, she's seen club dread more than I have. I've seen club dread. I saw beer fest. I've seen beer fest the most out of all of them. I did end up watching that one way more than I probably should have. Uh, out of all their movies, Beer Fest is one I've seen the most. <laughs> it's probably, I think, but that and Super Troopers tends to fight for the top spot, I believe. Oh, does it really? <laughs> yeah. I just thought it was just me because I'd seen it so many times. Uh, I've seen Super Troopers 2 more than I've seen the first one. Uh, only because that was like the one I I, I actually finally realized uh, uh, who they uh, Broken Lizard was. Uh, and now that I've at, I've watched rewatched this one, um, this one, and now that I own it because it's so hard to find, it'll be on my watch list more often than not. Yeah, that's my major complaint right now about Broken Lizard. Like, I don't care if they put out some other TV show or movie. I want a box set in Blu-ray. <laughs> Because all I can find are the old, like, Walmart $5 DVDs that are now $30, $40 for just that one movie. And it's becoming disgusting. And I'm like, I know I can buy certain ones from their website, but, like, I want remastered. I want a box set. I will agree with you. I think that uh, with the films that they've done, I think they – someone – if you're listening, someone out there should do a box set of uh, or maybe even uh, a 4K upgrade of uh, their films, especially Beer Fest, Club Dread, Super Troopers 1 and 2. And then you add in, you know, maybe uh, the Slam and Salmon. Slam and... And... I mean, you can do all of them because it's Puddle Cruiser, Super Trooper 1 and 2, Club Dread, Beer Fest, Slam and Salmon, and then Quasi and Tacoma FD. But Tacoma FD technically Show. isn't the Tacoma FD isn't Broken Lizard it's just the two of them so they don't have a ton of stuff I think there was another one or two that like Jay directed and wrote but wasn't technically super or Broken Lizard but they were Mm -hmm. still all in it um but yeah I mean they're so much fun (laughs) no I still have to see Quasi and Puddle Cruiser I haven't seen those two yet uh it took me a while to find Slam and Salmon as a used I figure where I found that randomly Oh my gosh, it started up right after I finished watching Club Dread. Oh, did <laughs> my wife and I loved it. Uh, she was not expecting it. I just kind of surprised her with this movie called Slam and Sam. And it's like, I got this movie by Bro- Broken Lizard. Remember, you you, uh, you love this movie, right? Because we had just, pro- I think we'd probably watch Super Trooper again for like the second, third time. Um Cause I got that, I got that for her for either anniversary or birthday or something, and I think we ended up watching it two more times right after I uh, I, I bought it for, her. Um, and then I decided to look, 
for the other movies. And I found uh, Slim and Sim. And finally, on Blu-ray, I have that one on fucking Blu-ray. Uh, uh, and so we watched that one. But I have not found, I haven't gotten uh, Quasi or Puddle Cruiser yet. So I still need to see those. Yeah, the other big thing I need to talk about this movie that we've mentioned briefly is Bill Paxton. Oh, uh, yes! How can we forget Bill Paxton? Let's talk about well, Bill. So it's it's a broken lizard movie. We got to start there. But Bill Paxton is just like a horror hero. I mean, looking at the guy, you don't expect him to be because you've <laughs> seen him in like Titanic and Apollo 13. And I guess you could say Twister isn't technically a horror film unless you're like terrified of tornadoes like I am. <laughs> but he does so many good horror films and you would not expect that from him at all. I think he's uh, someone can, who can appreciate uh, a straight horror film like Frailty and yes. he appre appreciate something like this, which is more comedy horror. Uh, he has pretty damn good comic timing. I mean, <laughs> even in Near Dark, he was very comedic with his character. Hmm. Um. And I mean, even in Aliens, yeah, it was very like lighthearted relief for such a suspenseful, thrilling movie. Uh yeah, I think he was the comic relief for for most of that movie. Uh, and the thing about this movie is, and, and I didn't think about it even when I recently rewatched it about Jimmy Buffett, but you're one hundred percent correct. I don't know why I didn't notice that until now. I was like, that's fucking oh my! I was like, dude. Bill Paxton pulls off a pretty damn good. Well, comparison. the East Coast girl is screaming. When the girl is screaming like "Play Margaritaville," and he's like, "I wrote this song seven years before that son of a son of a bitch stole it from me." Oh shit! Uh, yeah, and that's the, and that's the thing. Having rewatched it now recently, uh, it's like these are some of the things that I pick. Uh, I, I finally pick up on that I wish I had seen twenty years ago. I would have probably watched the movie more often and not gotten rid of my original dv i don't know if it was dvd or vhs now I got the movie. <laughs> that was 20 years ago uh i i think 20 years ago i probably had a few vhs tapes left don't even be looking at me like that you can't uh, audience uh members of everyone listening you can't see it but she's like looking at me like oh my god you're so old uh yeah, yeah. kevin you're so old how can i judge <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> But no, I, I really love what Bill Paxton has done um, from Near Dark, where he is just creepy, but in such a funny way. Because mm -hmm. that whole movie is just good, but then Frailty is just another kind of genius that he also directed that one at the same time. And it is by far one of my favorites. Yeah. Um, I constantly go back to that one just because of the cast. Uh, the way it's shot, it's just a beautiful film. Yeah. Uh, uh, unfortunately, he was taken away from us way too early before he can yeah. delve deeper into some of the great stuff that he was doing. Um, because I would have loved to have seen more uh horror films directed by him. Uh, I, or, I would have loved to see anything you know, from him. Yeah, anything really. Uh, he had a great eye when he did uh Frailty, and it's he a, really did. It's a shame that he didn't delve more into it before his passing. But that being said. He was one hell of a uh, comedy presence in this film. And uh, I didn't remember him dying so early in the film uh, originally. But, you know, since he's not even close to being the last person who gets killed. And we don't see him get killed, which is, uh, you know. Right? Yeah. Not, uh, no, we, we, we see his body Yeah, we see his body. But, yeah. yeah, it's it's quite a comedic moment that spurs the entire thing. <laughs> so it's kind of taken away that he's been killed. Mm -hmm. Until his nephew is talking about. <laughs> oh my god! But um, yeah. I mean, when I when I think about this film and I think about horror comedy um in general, and the people who are listening to our podcast who may or may not delve into horror comedy as much, this is a great example of a film that is a horror film first with a comic. Great comic timing from the characters. I don't want to say that there's jokes. There, there's not really jokes as there are all the comic moments are coming from characters. Uh, Coconut Pete is just literally J Jimmy Buffett who's high and drinking and always just wanting the nearest uh, girl as fast as possible. Uh, you know, and then of course Juan 
uh, <laughs> wants to sleep with everything until he starts thinking that someone's trying not to kill him. Uh, then that becomes funny because now he's not doing what he's known to do. Uh, and then of course, all the other characters have their little moments as well. Um, I think this is a, a really good ensemble film. It th- really is. Uh, that, which is rare. I mean, it's a horror film, you know, until the last act when people start getting killed. It's pretty much a, a, a mystery um, ensemble film. You're not supposed to know exactly who's the killer, uh, especially since some of the characters are trying to find out who the killer is. <laughs> I mean, it, it 100% is a slasher film where mm. you've got the one killer who is killing everybody and nobody can figure out who it is. Mm. Um, but yeah, it it's just such a fun little ride. Uh, I like to compare it as the opposite of Tucker and Dale versus Evil, <laughs> because that one is clearly a comedy first and horror yeah. second, where this is horror first and comedy second. But the characters, all the comedy from the characters are just so well done. Uh, you know what? I'm going to agree with you on that one. That <laughs> is definitely a comedy first with horror elements. And this one is definitely a horror first with comedy, comedy elements. And and these are both two films where they both success, successfully do both of those. Uh, yes. Films, uh, which is rare. People like to say it's hard to do comedy horror. Um, and right now we just mentioned two films that do both well. Um, we all know that there's plenty out there that don't do it at all well. But then, I mean, like, people get distracted with the, like, they've seen Scary Movie and they're expecting that kind of horror comedy. And it's mm-hmm. like, not all horror comedy is that slapstick, Three yeah. Stooges-esque <laughs> horror. Yeah, but... it, yeah. And you know what? To be honest with you, that could have uh, that could have peppered my interpretation of the movie 20 years ago. Because um, it came out around the same time. Yeah, and uh, I didn't like Scary Movie 1 or 2. <laughs> uh, and um, even though this movie had Bill Paxton in it, I probably was expecting that. And mm-hmm. that was what, we, what I got. Uh, so I can guarantee you that at that time, that was probably what was on my mind. Um, Because I did see Scary Movie 1 and 2 at the theater when they originally came out. Um, Didn't like either one of them. Don't ask me why I saw a second. Actually, I think I I saw the first three. Holy shit. I think I saw the first three at the theater. Oh my God, how did they rope me into that shit? Uh, Well, the first three were the only good ones. The ones after that were not good at all. So you only watch the good ones, Kevin. (laughs) And I didn't even think those were good. Okay. Oh my God. Uh, But I can't, I, I don't think I was in... Uh, now that I think about that time period, I don't think I was in the mood for uh, 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 horror comedies much. Um, it could have just been, the, the, you know, we all go through phases watching these films. And this is one of the great things about rewatching films. When I originally saw this, it, I kind of, pro- I saw it the one time and probably just completely forgot about the film after that. I, w- I will not lie. I will probably completely forgot about, about that because I wasn't in that mindset to enjoy the horror comedies like you were because you were growing up with it whereas with me you know i was like eh whatever and i never i just put it back down um and then i didn't go back to it till i saw beer fest which was supposed to be a straight up comedy uh which i have now seen way more than all the other broken lizard films <laughs> so i it could have just been the mindset of uh, of of when I originally watched the film versus now. Now I can greater appreciate the film, um, and I hope more people will. And uh, like I said, that I, with us rewatching films and discussing the films on our, on our podcast, this is one of the great things about uh, being able to rediscover films or discover them for the first time. So. Yeah, because looking at like horror comedies at that time, it was very drastically different. I mean, 98, you had Bride of Chucky, uh, Scooby Doo on Zombie Island, and you had the live action Scooby Doo movies. Um, oh. and then you started getting like like Placid in '99, Idle Hands in '99, American Psycho in 2000, and then you get Scary Movie and Scream 3 in 2000. So you get the very like this is ridiculous comedic horror versus like American Psycho dark comedies. Um, so it's all right around the same time. Oh. Scary Movie 2 came out in 01, Bubba Hotep in 02, um, Beyond Reanimator. Huh. The Eddie Murphy Haunted Mansion movie came out a year before this. So yeah, you're 
Scary Movie 3 came out right then too. So yeah, you're you're right around the perfect time of horror comedies where you get the really, really comedic ones where like anybody can watch them and then you get the dark stuff. Um, but then you get like this and Shaun of the Dead actually came out in the same year. And those are both genius uh, horror uh, comedies. I don't see how I could have not appreciated this more because Shaun of the Dead, when I saw that, was uh, absolutely brilliant. And I've seen that one a billion times. Yes. Uh, it's kind of like American Psycho. That Out of all the movies you've mentioned, American Psycho and Bride of Reanimator and maybe Bride of Chucky are the only ones that I gravitated towards. All the other ones were like ones I saw once and never bothered to watch again. Oh, yeah, because I was like a huge, I still am a huge Scooby-Doo fan. So like I, I remembered watching <laughs> them and being like, this could be so much better. <laughs> and then hearing the rumors about how, oh, it was supposed to be rated R. They were going to have people die and all this other fun stuff. And then they made it for kids. And you're like, well, they made it as creepy as they possibly could with some very rough CGI. Oh, the, like, the live action movie? Yeah. <laughs> I didn't watch the live action movies of Scooby Scooby. There's two live action movies until a year ago. I I watched it with my son. I did not. I avoided those like the plague until like a year ago. I saw them in theaters because I loved Scooby Doo. I watched every single one of those episodes, <laughs> all of the special guests. But yeah, so this coming out all around at the same time, like this is the perfect age for my generation, the millennials, where we were at the theaters every Friday watching scary movie or any of the chucky movies at that time <laughs> uh, scream getting big right there i mean we yeah. had such an eclectic group of horror movies at that time well that's the thing about you know horror comedies and i'm glad you brought all this up with the different types of comedy horrors at the time period is that there are so many different ways to approach it and depending on the generation that's watching it will depend on whether or not they enjoy it or not yeah. Um, you mentioned a whole bunch of films, and I remember the first two scary movies being extremely popular and extremely successful, uh, which made the whole franchise successful. But that both of those movies right there did absolutely nothing for me, and I've never gone back to rewatch those. Maybe we'll one day do those on the show. Uh, but you know, as of right now, my mindset for the scary movie, three films I have seen, is I thought they were all completely horrible movies. Uh, maybe my brain will think differently of them on a second viewing. Uh, but I I I honestly do believe that uh if I was to rewatch them now, I might have a different opinion, just like I have of this one. Um, if we hadn't discussed this or put this or if we hadn't been suggested to watch this film. I may have gone another 10 years or so without ever rewatching it again. Um, Broken Lizard to me is Super Troopers now and Beer Fest. Uh, or before was Super Troopers and Beer Fest. And now it'll be Club Dread and Beer Fest with Super <laughs> Troopers 2. <laughs> All right. Uh, any final words about uh, Club Dread uh, uh, or Broken Lizard? Because unfortunately, since they haven't done another horror film, we may not discuss Broken Lizard again on the show. Yeah, which is unfortunate because I do love them. Uh, maybe we'll have to take a break and do a review for all three Super Troopers movies when it comes out. But yeah, I mean, I I think it's still one of the better horror comedies that you could see. Uh, it's a whole lot of fun. It's super campy, which really fits the time period. Uh, and the homages to horror are just wonderful. Plus, Bill Paxton is Jimmy Buffett. What can go wrong? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, with that, I am going to let everyone know that I am so glad that we did uh, Club Dread and that uh, someone suggested that we do this uh, this this film because we don't do enough horror comedies on the show because all of our special guests are people who like uh, we gravitate to a different type of horror films and comedy horrors just don't come up that often. But we do appreciate a good horror comedy. So uh, if you have any suggestions, please make sure to let us know. That being said, uh, I do suggest if you've never seen a Broken Lizard film, this is a great movie to start off with, um, as is Beer Fest. Maybe before Super Troopers, but, you know, Super Troopers is also good. Uh, with that, I want to thank you all for joining us today, and thanks, Panazzo, for joining us on this uh, special guest. Uh, everyone out there, make sure to subscribe, like, and go out there and check out our, all of our previous episodes. Uh, they're on Spotify, your favorite uh, podcast app. We also have them on YouTube as well. Uh, make sure to check, check out our sister uh, podcast, which is 
Conversations in Four Color, which is our review show on comic books, manga, and graphic novels. With that, it has been a pleasure uh, speaking with you all, and have a good day. Conversations in Horror is a Broken Lighthouse Pictures production, produced by Kevin L. Powers, executive produced by Kelly A. Inoka, and originally filmed via Zoom technology. Conversations in Horror is hosted by Kevin L. Powers and co-hosted by various horror film lovers and filmmakers. To learn more about Mr. Powers, please make sure to check out his Patreon page and other social media platforms. Conversations in Horror is copyright 2024, Broken Lighthouse Pictures production.